All right, so we're like five days into spring, March 25th, and we're at 91 degrees. And of course, last night I remotely started up the observatory, and my RA axis stalled partway through and would not come back, and now I have absolutely no motion. I doubt it's the motor shot. The, the gears and everything, nothing's bound up. Um, but there's nothing obviously wrong with the control board either. Uh, of course, I've always worried also about these connections and the cables, uh, especially given that, you know, basically it's not captured completely on the, uh, the shield here um, or on the, the rubber string relief, anyway. So, I am going to just pull all the plugs and reseat them just to see if that makes any difference. I've already done the swap of the two drives, so I know that from here the control information is all working. Now, this is a little different than uh, most of the other Celestron telescopes in that they've split the motor control board into two pieces. Uh, you actually have all the digital uh, logic in here. So your uh, error 16 and 17 that you traditionally get talking to motors, that's back in here. And all that you have here is the, uh, a, an actual drive chip. So this is what actually drives the motor. And I'm not sure, I haven't looked closely whether it's just power supply. It looks like it is with just the capacitor. It's probably just regulation. Uh, but essentially, all of that comes in, and this is just your uh, encoder and motor going up here. Most of it going to uh, the encoder on the back of the motor. Oops. Do a little better job. So coming up here, going to the motor on the back of the encoder, the heavy red and black lines on the one side are the actual motor drive. Um, then you've got the limit switches and the uh, sensors that are off the end of this for your uh, RA uh, sensor so that you can do your periodic error corrections. So that's your periodic sensor, essentially. Um, so with all of that, I'm going to test this, but uh, I'm not really thrilled about the idea of digging into the other axis so that I can test. I mean, I know the failure uh, is, is essentially from here on, um, but I don't know for sure whether it's this, this board or the motor itself. So I will do a few things and we'll see. All right, so I tried reseeding the connections. That didn't do any good. Uh, but in moving this around, I did see a little baby June bug carcass come out from under the board. So it's always possible I got something that just came up here and shorted something uh, and screwed it up that way. Um, so, you know, how it got in there, there's enough of a gap, I guess. And there's, uh, you know, it's that time of year. The one thing that does disturb me a little bit, and I'm going to pull this board and take a look underneath it, but I'm seeing far too much gold around those pins for the actual driver board. I'm kind of wondering why there's not uh, more solder visible actually wicking up on the lead. So it's possible this driver is actually not soldered in well either. Uh, that'd be great if that was all it was, was a cold solder joint that I needed to re-solder. Uh, but we shall see. Well, so there's definitely smoky residue around those pins. I don't know if those are the output pins, but I would suspect that's the case. And so it's possible that our little June bug friend got up in there and fried himself and possibly fried the circuit in the process. Um, this should be straightforward to get a new one, but I'm going to check. Those solder joints don't look very pretty. Uh, I do have the soldering iron out here that I can use to try to fix that. I am kind of curious about the KO written on there, <laughs> whether this was already, yeah, I got this used, it's always possible somebody else had been in this and already had problems with it, but um, interesting nonetheless. Uh, so I will 
take a look and see what I can do with that. And whoops, I gotta take that back. Up here is the drive chip. Those two pins um, are the two capacitors. Now, normally a failing capacitor or a bad capacitor, you see a balloon on the top. There's no evidence of that. I wouldn't expect it to blow through the board, but certainly uh, the capacitor going bad could kill this thing too. So this is the actual drive chip, and you can see it was soldered in and then clipped. Um, no evidence that it's bad, but really need to get this home and under a microscope so I can check all of the connections. Turn it around. So that's a national driver chip. Can't quite see the part number there. And this whole board costs about 80 bucks to replace. Um, but, you know, if it ends up being that it's a couple dollars worth of capacitors, uh, would bring it back to life, that'd be phenomenal. And from there, we'll just have to look at it. Yeah, I am curious about all the writing on it, whether somebody's already worked, reworked this board at least once, either at the factory or the previous owner. That may be just marks from somebody having desoldered and replaced the capacitors. Uh, and if so, that will be my first attempt, is to check these caps and if they don't check out, I'll replace them, and hopefully that'll fix it. All right, so I pulled the capacitors on this, and they were both fine. Uh, I re-soldered the drive chip, and still no joy in terms of getting this running. So now I've opened up the upper axis. Now, I wasn't able to actually get to the screws here, and I decided, well, let's see if this whole assembly will come off without removing those screws. It turns out that the two lid screws on the front actually go into the body up here. Uh, so I don't actually have to remove those. I just had to remove that. I was already missing a couple of screws here. So like I say, it's obvious that somebody had been into this before. Um, but... This is the other axis, and you'll note that we only have one limit switch now uh, instead of two, and of course, no uh, RA sensor. So just the encoder and motor. So basically, I'm gonna swap this and confirm that this board drives the other axis, and as long as that works, then I know that it is probably just this drive chip that is gone. Uh, those through somebody like Newark or DigiKey cost about 20 bucks. Uh, I found one on eBay from a U.S. supplier that was 10. You can probably get them out of China for about five. Uh, so I'm going to hopefully determine that it's not the motor. And if so, then I'll just replace that chip when it comes in. Well, after trying to drive this motor with the board from the RA uh, and then confirming that if I put this board on, or sorry, not the RA, declination. If I put this board, that's the one that I serviced on the declination, uh, declination axis still runs, this axis doesn't, which means that the motor is shot. So unfortunately, uh, well, I want to pull the motor and see what the chances are that it's something wrong with a lead somewhere. Uh, it looks like I'm going to have to buy a new motor. So that sucks. And so that means pulling the uh, gear and then pulling all of the screws. And I can take that motor. Um, 
I am tempted. I need to go check my... Uh, I, I actually have my mount for my um, original uh, CPC that I took this tube off of. That I've been planning on doing something with, but for now it's just sitting there. So if I could swap this motor, uh, if it's the same motor, that would be awesome. Uh, but I'll have to investigate that. Well, so testing with my meter, the motor shows open circuited, which is kind of what I expected to run into. And so that implies that probably just the brushes uh, have failed. So I'm going to see if it's possible to get into the back end of this thing and just try to service the brushes if that's all that's happened. If a coil's burnt out, I'm out of luck. If the brushes are gone, don't know if I'll be able to make a viable replacement, but it's something I can at least try. And worst case, other varieties of this motor are considerably cheaper, and it might be possible to buy one and ransack it for parts. But we shall just have to see what we see, if we can get into it at all, without it being a press fit case that uh, you destroy everything. So we pulled the cover off the encoder, just right here, and we're going to go in, and the black marks were on there, again, don't know why, uh, I added the blue mark just to help as a reference when I go to put this back on, although, as you can see, that ridge of the encoder is roughly lined up with these black tabs, so that would be a good guide as well. Uh, so... We'll see if I can get the set screw loose, and then we will go from there. Well, it figures I do not have a small enough Allen wrench uh, to get to that, um, in, at least in the kit I have here. Of course, I do have a tip in my little boxer kit here that would fit, but the body of the screw actually just fits in between that and I'm already concerned about if I've contacted that encoder surface if I messed something up already uh, attempting to get to that because I don't know how sensitive that is uh, so if I get it off we'll see if I've completely screwed the encoder up all right so coming back to my Pittman motor that failed on my um, Celestron CGM, or sorry, CGE Pro. I finally have the encoder wheel off, but unfortunately in the process of getting it off, I actually had to, to drill out the hole here. And I managed to abrade just the surface. So there's actually a thin plastic layer over the top of the encoder disc itself. So the encoder's etched just in a, looks like a, almost a gold layer. Um, and there's a layer of plastic over top of it. Whether or not I can polish that out or find a, a, a plastic or acrylic polish that uh, is a similar factor so that I can clean that up and you'll be able to still see through it properly remains to be seen. Uh, I certainly knew this was a risk that I would end up destroying this whole thing. I tried to be careful, but obviously somewhere along the line, I wasn't careful enough. And thus that disc may be ruined. And given it's a 512 count encoder, that is probably a significant portion of the total cost of this motor. Um, but now that that's off we can at least go inside and see what the state of the motor is i hope uh, basically next step is we'll pull the encoder off and i believe underneath this assembly uh, are a couple of screws that hold the brush side of the motor on and we'll see just what shape state or what shape those brushes are in so here's the view of the damage i caused to the uh, encoder disc. This is actually just the plastic on the surface of the disc. It's been abraded, so we'll see whether or not I can potentially polish that out uh, and still have the disc register properly. Uh, but 
I knew this was a risk to destroy this whole thing, and potentially I have, but we'll still go ahead and see just what we ended up getting. All right, after pulling the two screws, the encoder circuit board comes right off. And as you can see, the whole purpose was to allow us to get to those two screws. And so the next step is to pull those and see what the back end of this thing looks like. So these are full length screws, went the entire length up into the gearbox uh, assembly or the front end. Uh, and you can see they're Loctited, so they were a little stiff uh, coming undone. Uh, you know, if this is old enough, you could actually shear a bolt if, or shear a screw if you're not careful. I have not attempted to pull it apart yet, because I figured I would share that joy with everybody. So let us just very carefully and one-handedly, unfortunately, slide this off. Let's see if we can get an idea. Actually, it looks like I probably buggered the end of that shaft up just enough uh, where the set screw was. Uh, so I'm going to have to drop this and come back and show you once I get it open. All right, so here we are with everything pulled apart. The bearing ended up uh, hanging up on the uh, that point and pulling out of the housing instead of pulling off the shaft, but that's fine. Looking at the commutators and there's no obvious no evidence of anything uh, burnt on the armature so I would say that the motor itself is probably still okay the commutators don't look beautiful uh, I don't know how well you can see that with the camera unfortunately that's about as good as we're gonna get uh, so they're a little black and scorched the interesting thing was is that so this has this neat little housing and their regular carbon style brush which is you know surprised me it's a little over what I expected to find I was expecting to just find spring brass contacts like in a cheap motor um, but the interesting thing is when I pulled this off one brush the spring popped it completely out the other brush didn't move at all and I suspect that that is my problem, is that the brush itself is probably, whether the plastic it has melted, whether it's just a little dirty or what, but I suspect that that brush was not pushing its way in like it's supposed to. Um, and we eventually just wore away and no longer had contact. So I'm going to take the tweezers and fiddle here just a little bit and see what happens. I'll get the one that's that's sprung out out of the way if I can and see how the other one behaves. But that's what I'm suspecting is my problem. Now of course looking inside the motor body just have two permanent magnets. Pretty common for a DC brush style motor. Nothing special about it uh, other than just the the gauge of the metal and you know the nice machined back end here. All right, so I actually had to push relatively hard. Initially, I tried grabbing and pulling on the brush and actually chipped a little bit off of it when it slipped on the tweezer. Um, but I, then I pushed from behind and was able to get it to move, but it's actually very stiff. And I don't know how well there the lighting's better. I'm pretty sure that that right there is our problem, that this brush heated up enough that this little plastic housing uh, melted a little, puckered up, and that's actually making that brush very stiff uh, to move back and forth. And so the spring just can't push that brush. Now you'll notice when I move the other one out, uh, the wire's actually in the back of the brush. So it's you know kind of like a typical uh, brush you'd see on a bigger uh, AC motor. Uh, the wire just goes into the back of that part and let's see if I flip this over so there you can actually see potentially the little braided wire going into the back of the brush not uncommon and you can see a little bit where 
it's no longer a nice perfect circle it's chipped a little um, but I want to see if I can't get this to ride a little smoother I'm pretty confident if I put this thing back together right now uh, the motor will probably run as long as that brush remains maintains contact but if it doesn't actually slide in its channel well uh, then it will fail again uh, and of course this is a very frustrating minor problem to deal with uh, if I can't you know if, if I've ruined that now something that is a, a no-cost fix essentially or at worst the the cost of this little piece of plastic and, and a new set of brushes uh, has now become a very expensive repair um, and it's largely because the set screw that they use on this is just far too small now the other question will be because I'm pretty sure that by the time I finish drilling this out I have none of the original threads left which to a point is fine provided I can thread this larger and put a larger set screw in without doing more damage to the surface of the thing um, but that's just another part of this whole puzzle um, but let us play with that and see what we get all right so taking this apart a little further uh, you can now see inside how uh, we've got the two pins that the incoming wires are pressed under along with the, the two brushes and then there's actually a decoupling capacitor across this, presumably just to take the noise down from the brush noise. Um, but what you see here on this side, and you can actually see it on the outside just a little bit as well, um, is how you can see how that's distorted on the outside compared to the bottom one here. And inside, definitely how it's distorted. So that's why that brush is binding up. That's just one side of it. Uh, and of course the other side is still underneath this brush. And let's see if I can pull that out. I'm gonna Alright, so pulling that bound up brush out of the way. Um, again, just that whole channel is rough because it's all slightly melted and whether or not I can smooth it enough that this will work reliably for a while uh, we shall see I don't know if I'll be able to illustrate this or not uh, definitely going inside the plastic the um, it's very coarse and you can tell the difference uh, running anything across it but you'll notice how freely and easily this brush slides in its slot. And this is the bound up one, which, you know, I can, I can push it, but it's it, on all sides, it's just tight. And so that's the problem. I may take a piece of sandpaper to the channel, just see if I can't smooth it out and loosen it up a little bit. Uh, I could also potentially just sand the sides of the brush down some. Uh, to help them clear, but I'll start with the plastic and then we'll put the motor back together after we've got it sliding a little smoother and go from there. All right, so after cleaning up the channel uh, initially with some sandpaper and finally just with an X Acto knife to get the stuff out of it, uh, the brush slides relatively well. Uh, but now I've got to try to figure out how to get this thing back together without it falling apart. And you'll notice here, there's obviously a tool that they use, first off, just to even get this thing assembled. This was a pain to get back together uh, because of the spring tension. So there's obviously a tool. You see these two slots and where these springs are hanging out. Uh, you'd have a tool that you'd use to push that back and be able to actually fit this then over the armature the other thing you'll see here i went ahead and cleaned the shaft up enough to pull the bearing off and so you've got this one insulating washer here that goes right up against that uh that opening everything up and getting it across that would be even harder 
than just trying to get it on as is. So, um, unfortunately, while I would prefer to put that whole assembly in the housing, all of these washers, so these washers here plus that, all have to go over the shaft before you hit the bearing. Um, and I just don't see any way to hold those in place. Again, maybe with the right tool, but it looks more like that this is a step-by-step -step jig where you would have a tool that you'd uh, drop this assembly on there and potentially something that held it in place until you slid the, the lid on the thing. Um, but I don't have any of that. I could try coming up and 3D printing a tool, and if this kills me, I will, but this is going to be attempt number two. First time I attempted to spread these out and slip them over, uh, the brushes fell out, and I had to start this whole process over. Uh, so we will see if I can do this or not. All right, so I have these two pairs of very excellent locking uh, jeweler's tweezers that I got 30 years ago uh, when I worked for a company that had a jewelry department and they went out of business. Uh, so these are actually better than a lot of the ones I found online these days. Uh, but the nice thing is I was able to grab those two springs and then use an X-Acto knife just to push the uh, two commutator brushes back in and slip this over and so now it's where it belongs uh, on the commutator and I'll slip the washer over it and take these off or actually probably take these off first because it's going to be unwieldy at this point and should be able to finish the assembly. So can you spot what's wrong? Apparently I put the magnet body on backwards which means that I have to actually pull everything back off and flip the magnet body around because the screws don't actually go through the holes. And so I believe the plus and minus are actually supposed to be down towards where the wires are, which would make sense. Doggone it. Well, the good news is I was able to just grab those two springs and uh, reclamp them pull everything off, flip the body around, and so now, as I'm careful taking these back off, I should be able to put this back together the correct way. And here we are, hooked up to just a fixed 5 volt supply, and it appears to be running fine. I wanted to use my variable power supply, but it's going bad, so it wasn't stable. Uh, was causing it to oscillate. But that fixes it until it fails again. I'm sure it'll do the same thing. Now, question now becomes, can I fix that? And if I can't polish that out to be clean uh, so that I get my account, then fixing the motor may be a moot point. 